What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, delicious, smoky, tender, amazing chicken brine direct heat spare ribs and baby backs. Coming up! These are some ribs! Pat them dry. What I got here is some baby back ribs, also known as loin back ribs. Ooh, got a bone sticking on that one. And some good old St. Louis cut spare ribs. And as far as trimming these up, there's really not all that much we need to do, especially on the baby backs. If there's anything weird hanging off on this backside, I'll clean that up. Just trying to make it look a little bit nicer. Could take this baby bone on the end off. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Look at that thing sticking out already. Been a minute since I cooked some baby backs. But other than that, these are looking good. We do have this big chunk of meat that's looking like it wants to fall off on the end here, but you know what? I'm just gonna leave it on today. Clean it up a little bit. Looking good to me. Membrane on for both of these racks. I'm a membrane on kind of guy, but feel free to let me know if you don't like that. But especially how we're cooking these today, well, tomorrow, I think it's gonna work out much better. Keeps all the fat in, keeps the ribs together. And when cooked properly, they get nice and crispy and very edible. As for these, find that last little bone, square this off a little bit, take off the skirt meat. Probably Probably just throw this on the grill for a little snacky poo or save it for sausage. Up to you. Pull off some of this extra fat. Other than that, take this muscle off as we usually do. Just trying to make these look nice and then round these off. And there we go. Looking good to me. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to brine these ribs because I've never actually brined ribs before. Actually, I suppose I did brine some ribs once a while back on the channel. I made some ham brined holiday ham ribs that were absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend checking out that video. That's more of a cure than a brine. And it got me thinking, you know, I've brined plenty of pork chops in my life, plenty of hams, plenty of other pork cuts, but I've never tried it with ribs. Mostly because I'm usually thinking about things from a restaurant perspective where brining briskets or brining ribs would just take up way too much time and way too much space. So today I'm going to bust out my classic chicken brine. We're going to throw these in overnight, throw them on the direct heat cooker and see if they come out any juicier or any more flavorful. Because especially when you're cooking hot and fast over direct coals, I think some added moisture can only help. So let's go ahead and get our brine ready. <sighs> So what I got here is a hotel pan and I basically eyeballed as much water as I think I'm going to need to submerge both of these beautiful racks of ribs. I weighed out the amount of water and now I'm going to do 5% salinity and just get that nice and mixed up. You could definitely take some of this water, heat it up and make sure all this salt dissolves right off the bat. But I found if you just whisk it for long enough, it'll all dissolve eventually. And that way you don't have to wait for a brine to cool down. And once looking nice and clear, we're gonna go in with the rest of our ingredients, including some hot sauce. I'm doing 5% hot sauce as well. This is a mixture of Valentina's and of course some Texas peat. And the thought process behind this brine is that it's 5% salinity, which is a nice salty brine, but it's also 5% hot sauce. And the hot sauce is acting as an acid in this brine which is gonna add some wonderful flavor and some nice tang, but also it's gonna help tenderize the meat in the same way buttermilk does. Because buttermilk has a 5% acidity to it as well. That's why it makes chicken and other things nice and tender when you brine in buttermilk. So by adding 5% hot sauce, we should get some nice tenderizing effects as well. Other ingredients include a few bay leaves, just because I've got them on hand, some crushed garlic, lightly crushed, some Italian seasoning, some cayenne, because we're going spicy today, and some white pepper. Love me some white pepper. Again, this is originally designed to be a chicken brine, but I think all these flavors will work really well with ribs as well. So just get this nice and mixed up. Beautiful, smelling good. And now simply enough, in we go with our ribbies. Going bone side down. That's because they're arched. That way we can get some nice brine flow underneath. Put these in as well. And there we go, nicely submerged. Lids on. And now into the fridge this goes overnight for the next 12, 15 hours or however long it takes until I throw these on the pit. Oh, that's heavy. One brine later. Let's see how these ribbies are looking. Ooh. These brine for about 30, 36 hours or so because uh, I was gonna cook them yesterday, but I got distracted. So we're gonna find out if that was too long. These are definitely feeling heavy. Color has changed pretty significantly. That's from all the acid in the brine. Let's get rid of this. Gotta say, these are looking really weird. But first, we gotta pat them dry. Pretty weird. Looks like I boiled these things. But in theory, these are nice and juicy and have a whole bunch of flavor running all the way throughout. So we really don't need to add anything. But of course, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with some 16 mesh black pepper. On sale now, shopchuds.com. And I suppose you could go on with a more complex rub, maybe some pepper, paprika, a little turmeric for some color, whatever you like, but just stay away from the salt because these are fully salted. 
flip them over and just a nice even coat even though it's an incredibly windy day and as always do your best not to forget the sides not as important on ribs but come on and those are looking pretty much perfect to me let's fry up the pit One of these days, I'm gonna throw that pesky, dirty, no good rotten little boot snake in a chicken brine and just throw him on the pit. Firing up the all new mini chud box. On sale now. When it comes to cooking on a pit like this, I like to get it started with the black bag charcoal because it's smaller chunks that fit into the chimney easier. But then kind of running it like an offset with these bigger chunks from the yellow bag, just kind of toss them in periodically and they catch really quick and it makes maintaining temps real easy. So we got this pit rocking around 300 degrees, which is where I typically like to cook things. That is, if we're cooking direct heat barbecue. And simply enough, on we go. Starting out bone side down, protect the meat. Oh, beautiful fit. Scrunch these up a little bit. And now we're gonna maintain temps for a good few hours. Alrighty, we're about two and a half hours into this cook and it's time to give these guys a flip. Looking real nice, getting some good color on there. Oh yeah, nice toasty membrane. You can tell it's nice and crisp. And now it's time to get some color on the underside. By that, I mean the top. And while that cooks away, let's go ahead and bust out a quick mop sauce. Starting with some butter. Ooh. And I'm just gonna kinda eyeball everything today because I'm feeling kinda lazy. Followed by some onion. Just let that cook away. Let those onions get some nice color on them. Soften up a bit. Oh God. And then we'll go in with some crushed garlic. I'm feeling heavy on the garlic today. God, that smells good. And once that's smelling nice and fragrant, we're gonna go ahead and add some sliced up lemon because it's classic. Then we're gonna go ahead and throw in some paprika, mostly for color. Get that nice and mixed up. Oh, that looks cool. Then we're gonna go in with, I don't know, about a cup or so's worth of some white vinegar. Same amount-ish of some apple cider vinegar. Beautiful. Do a little shot of whoosh, because I like. Get. And of course, we gotta have some hot sauce in there. A little Texas Pete for the win. A little bit of yellow mustard, cause I wanna get rid of it mostly. Oh. And just let that come back up to a simmer. Beautiful. And to top it all off, I'm going in with a pretty decent amount of some brown sugar. That way, when we start mopping this on the ribs, we get some nice tang, some nice good flavor and acidity on there, but also build up a layer of some sweetness because I like a sweet and savory rib. Woo. Gonna let this cook away for another couple of minutes just to make sure everything is nice and happy and it's all gotten to know each other. Beautiful. And for good measure, we'll top it with some mirror light. Beautiful. And that right there is what I love about the mini chud box. You don't need wood to create smoke. That is just charcoal and all the juice is dripping out of the ribs down onto the charcoal. And the smell is just phenomenal. Anywho, it's time to begin mopping. So with our mop sauce, just gonna kinda go up and down, add some lovely flavor to these ribs, soften up any bits that might be crunchy. This too will drift down and create some really flavorful steam and smoke. And it'll start cooking onto the ribs, adding some absolutely wonderful flavor. So we'll do this probably every 15 minutes or so. And after several mops, and yeah, I did flip these around to make sure they were cooking evenly. These ribs are probing nice and tender. Just boop, love it, boop, boop, love it. Nice and tender. So off these come. So to finish these up, I'm gonna put them in some foil, hit them with some mop sauce one last time, just cause I've got it. Add a little more flavor, a little more moisture to the wrap. And as you can see, I've got them meat side down, which will help out and close them up. I'm probably gonna pop these back on the pit for maybe about 20 minutes or so, just to kind of steam up the insides a little bit, make sure they are nice and juicy, and then we'll let them rest and check back in. All right, without further ado, I think it's time to see how these brined direct heat ribs came out. Ooh, feeling nice and tender. Ooh, yeah. Definitely very tender, loving that color on there. Definitely looks like a direct heat rib. And of course we got the baby backs. I haven't had a baby back in a very long time. Nothing wrong with that, folks. Oops, oh no. All right, and can't forget about his friend over here. Ooh, yes, please, love it. Let's go ahead and start with these beautiful spare ribs. Flip them over. 
pretty nice looking rib to me. Loving the color on that. Looking pretty juicy, nice and tender. And now let's go for the baby backs. Not gonna lie, I hate cutting baby backs. Bones, they just go in every single direction, all at the same time. They're so wide. like underneath wide great oh yeah just ruined it meat's looking good though nice and tender nice meaty baby back Ooh, they are fun to eat though all right let's see if i can try this again without failing but now that they're cut i'm not so mad about it Ooh, i'm ready to dive in we'll start with this one because i'm holding it mm. Mm. oh wow mm. that is truly a phenomenal rib Oh, so much flavor. Mm. Oh my goodness. That's probably the best baby back I've ever had. Mm. The brine is definitely there. You can totally taste it. It's got that hot sauce zing kind of all throughout because it was in the mop sauce and in the brine. The meat is just so flavorful. You know, a lot of times with meaty ribs like this, you get that first bite with all the sauce and the pepper and the salt and everything on the exterior, but then it gets a little bland once you get closer to the bone. Not the case with these. These are phenomenal. Mmm, that direct heat flavor, the mop sauce, that membrane, perfectly edible. Don't need to be scared of it, folks. Nice, clean bone. Wow. It's also perfectly seasoned all the way throughout. Like I was saying, because of the brine, every square inch of meat on this thing, it's full of flavor. That's ridiculous. Mmm. Mm. And then, of course, we got the spare rib over here looking nice. I'm ready for this one. Mm-hmm. Nice bite through consistency, beautiful crunchy bark, so good. <clears throat> now, this is gonna go against everything I've ever believed about ribs and barbecue, but for this particular recipe, the baby backs are definitely the clear winner here. That was just a phenomenal bite. Mm. Mm. You know, a spare rib doesn't need much because it's such a fatty cut. It's essentially pork belly on a bone, but the baby back, they've kind of been dry in the past for me. So having this really tender, flavorful meat all the way throughout, I'm definitely doing this one again. Oh, it smells so good. Brooke, would you like some ribs? <laughs> yes, please. I recommend the baby backs. Okay, I was gonna say, are these baby backs I haven't had a baby back in a... We got baby backs and spare ribs. In a long time. I was just saying that I never cook them because I don't know how to cut them properly. I think mm. the bread knife is not the proper knife, but anyway. Mm. What is it? It's a rib. What's this sauce? So this is a direct heat cooked rib with a pretty typical mop sauce on it. Okay. But I brined the ribs in my classic chicken brine. Mmm. So That's like, why I'm tasting. Yeah. Well, a little more the zing. mop sauce for sure I'm tasting, but it's really tangy. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's a little much for me. But I think it's because you made those like honey mustard ones so long ago. You're talking like 2016. Mm-hmm. Nothing can beat those for me, I think. I made honey mustard ribs? Were they baby bags? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll add it to the to-do list. Yes. Yeah, the bark is extra tangy because mm -hmm. it's got the mop sauce and the brine. But once you get into the meat, oh yeah. I'm liking it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, all in all, I think brining a ribs as impractical as it would be for a restaurant, I think it's a great idea for the backyard cook, at least to mix things up a little bit. And as always, once you have the water and the salt content down, you can add whatever you want to that brine. If you want it to make it super spicy or even a little bit sweet, I think there's definitely a lot of ways we could do this to our advantage. And for baby backs, like I said, I think it's great, which makes sense because you often brine a pork loin or a pork chop or something like that that's a little bit leaner. And I'm very happy with how these came out. And the fact that we cooked them over direct heat, you know, it's a bit more of an intense cook than something like an offset. I think having a little bit of extra moisture running through the meat really helped out. But all that being said, I think it's time for the official taste test. That looks like a nice little morsel. That was quick. I wasn't even ready. <laughs> Boys, fellow YouTubers. Extremely good. Unreal. 10 really, out of really 10. Good. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 as well. All right, I figured it out. You just got to pick it up. Adam Perry Lang style. Yeah, that's working out much easier. There we go. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic chicken brine, direct heat, smoky pork, spare ribs, and baby backs. I highly recommend giving this one a try. Whatever brine you want to make, I think it's a really great way to impart some more juiciness and more flavor all the way throughout your ribs. It's definitely an extra step that's not necessary, but ribs are pretty cheap. I cook them all the time, and having this in the arsenal is definitely a fun thing to have around. And I will most certainly be making those baby backs again, probably very soon. And I highly recommend you do the same. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button let youtube know by dropping a like on this video if you give this recipe a try for yourself be sure to tag me on instagram at chuds barbecue i'd love to see what y'all are cooking big shout out to all the patreon members thank you for supporting team chud and allowing me to keep making all of these videos and until the next time i see you please go cook something outside peace